Hi, my name is Julia Silge, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today, in this screencast, we're going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set on um, TV shows and movies on Netflix. We're going to train a machine learning model to distinguish between the two, to distinguish between movies and TV shows based on the um, how they're described in the description on Netflix. So this is going to use um, uh, natural language processing, use, use um, uh, the tidy models framework for modeling um, using uh, text data, text features. Um, this is, if you watch the last screencast I did, it's quite similar in that we're using text uh, features as input to um, a linear support vector machine, but we're going to use a, diff a different way to create the features. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started exploring this data set of movies and TV shows that are on Netflix. So I'm going to load the data set here and let's take a look at what is in it. <clears throat> so this column here, type, has in it, um, whoops, not that has in it um, whether each of these titles is a movie or of a t or a TV show. And then we have other um, variables here, like the title, um, the director, the cast, uh, when it was added on Netflix, when it was originally released, and so on. And um, another, Another information set of information over here is this description field. So this description field is um, is text here. So let's kind of look at how long this text is and what it is like. So let's um, let's just take a oh, slice sample. Let's take a um, uh, just like 10 example um, titles here and let's pull out the description so we can look at it like so. All right, so these aren't, this, so this isn't super long, right? This isn't super long here, but um, we have um, about, you know, but they're all kind of about equal in length, which would be great if we were gonna do some deep learning. Um, I don't think we are though. We're just gonna build a, a more um, a traditional uh, kind of machine learning model here. So we have descriptions that to tell us what these TV shows and movies are about. So let's look at a couple other ones. Um, so we can kind of do this over and over again and kind of look at what this data is, what, what's in here. So we've kind of got short, short-ish description fields telling us what about the content of the TV um, shows and movies. So let's do a um, make a visualization of these of these description fields before we get started on some modeling. So let's load the tidy text package, and then we can use the function unnest tokens from the tidy text package and unnest into Word from that description field, and then let's remove stop words from that word um, column there. And then let's count by type um, and word. So go sort, uh, count with um, two arguments there so that we can say what the most common, um, what, the, what the most common words are in these two categories. So we say life, young, new man, family, and movie. And then we can see here we've got, um, uh, series showing showing up here. Remember with that this this is this data set. I think I did this up earlier there, but there's quite a lot more type. There's quite there's like twice as many movies as TV shows in this data set. So that's why this num these numbers are a lot higher, and we don't see series until way down here. Notice that series isn't in this data set at all with movie, right? So when the when a description field has the word series in it, you know it's only shows or it's showing up a lot more often for TV shows than for the other ones. So this kind of is showing like, well, maybe we're going to be able to train a model that will be able to distinguish between TV shows and movies based on the, um, the descriptions, especially if they, you know, it talks about series and whatnot. And 
um, you know, documentary and whatnot, and these two different categories. Let's make a quick visualization here. So let's group by type and then take uh, a slice um, of the top by this um, variable n. Let's take the, um, the top, say, 15 um, words by, by word count, then ungroup. And let's, um, let's use the function reorder within from tidy text and reorder word by n within type. So this makes it a factor which is nice for plotting. And then we can plot this into ggplot. So we'll put n on the x-axis, word on the y-axis, and we can fill by type. And then I'm gonna make um, geom call. I don't think we need the legend. Let me do this. And then what we need to add, because I use this reorder within, is we need to um, use one of these scale y uh, reordered, with these one of these reordered functions. And uh, I need a facet wrap. I'm gonna facet by type like that. All right, okay, that's almost right. So I let me make scales equal to free. All right, that's pretty good. So I could clean this up a little bit. Um, so what, what on the, is on the x-axis? x-axis is number of uses of word uses, like word frequency. And num on the y, I'm just gonna get rid of that because I think that's pretty obvious that that is, um, those are words like this. So what this is telling us, this is the top words in Netflix descriptions by frequency after removing stop words for movies and for TV shows. So on TV shows, we see series, life, world, new friends, family. And on movie, the movie side, we see um, life as well, young, new, Man, woman, love, documentary. So we see some differences on these two sides. Some words that are the same, but some words that are different. And so our goal in this screencast is going to be to train a machine learning model that looks at these, um, these words in the description field and is, uh, uh, learns to um, be able to distinguish um, between a description um, that is about a movie and one that is about a TV show. Um, so let's, we're gonna use um, <clears throat> a fairly straightforward kind of model and pre-processing here, but you really could uh, train all kinds of different models to do this. So today we're gonna use tidy models to do this. And I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to split my data into testing and training. So I'm gonna take this, this Netflix title data set. I'm only going to use type and description. And I'm gonna, um, whoops, I never loaded that. There we go, okay. And then I'm gonna do initial split and I'm gonna do this, uh, use stratified uh, resampling um, here because um, we had we have some class imbalance. There are a lot more movies than TV shows, so I'm going to stratify this, and then I'm going to make my training data here from the split, and then I am going to make my testing data from the split like so. And then next thing I need to make is I need to make some resampled folds of data. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make, um, cross valid, use cross validation to make folds of data. I, I use the training data to do this. And I'm also going to use stratification here as well. Um, be, be again, because of that class imbalance. So let's call this Netflix folds here. So if I run all this, what I get is, whoop, Netflix split, silly. There we go. Okay, so I have training data, testing data, and then now I make um, resamples. I make cross-validation folds here. And so um, 
what is the per the purpose of these data sets? So this is this section here is like spending our data budget. We only have a certain amount of data with which to train a machine learning model, and we um, we set a, a certain amount for training. A certain amount is held back for testing um, to the very end. The purpose of that data is to estimate how our model will perform on new data. And then we take our training data and we create um, simulated, uh, many simulated data sets to use to, um, to estimate performance. We could use that to compare models or to tune models. So this, think of this section as um, uh, spending your data budget. Now let's move on to um, feature engineering because we've got this text data set and it needs to be pretty heavily pre-processed to um, be ready for um, a machine learning algorithm. So we're going to uh, make a recipe. So I'm going, the outcome here is type, which is, is it a TV show or a movie? And we're going to predict type from the description, the description that is found from Netflix. So the data here that we use to um, learn about, in this case, what the data is being used for is to learn about types, be, to be able to learn about what kind of um, data types we're dealing with. And now we're going to go through the steps of feature engineering for this text data set. I'm going to do use, um, I'm, whoops, I didn't ever load that. There we go. So I'm going to first tokenize. And, you know, for this um, example, I'm just going to tokenize to unigrams, to single words. But if you go in here, we can, you know, we could change to something like n-grams. But I'm not going to do that here. We're just going to go for a quick and easy um, a basic model. I'm going to... Um, use, I'm going to filter to say, I'm not going to keep every token in this whole data set because that would be, that would blow up, you know, the memory on my computer and be too many. And besides, many of the uh, infrequently used um, tokens are not helpful in a model. They're not going to be predictive. So let's say the max that I'm going to use is, um, Oh, I don't know. Let's see. How much data do I have here? So the, so each of these cross-validation folds has in its an, um, analysis set 5,000. So let's, let's use, um, let's keep 1,000 tokens. So that's, we use 1,000 most used tokens here. This would be where we would actually up here do um, remove stop words. I'm actually not going to remove stop words um, because um, I let's see if the stop words end up being important to this model. Then I'm going to weight by TFIDF. Um, so we put which um, which variable I'm weighting here. And now I'm going to I'm going to use a model that needs to have the um, that needs to have the um, <clears throat> the variables uh, centered and scaled. So I'm going to normalize these uh, variables here. I, actually, that's not right. I'm going to say all numeric predictors at this point. And then I will, anything else I need to do? Uh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, Let's go back up here and let's load the Themis library, which has packages for handling class imbalance. And I'm going to add step um, smote, step smote. Let's look at what it is. It is a, um, uh, a feature engineering step or a data preprocessing step to uh, for upsampling for so if we have data imbalance like we have a whole lot more movies than tv shows here what this step does is it generates new examples of the minority class which here is the um uh the tv Yes, the TV shows um, using nearest neighbors of these cases. So it makes new examples to put into the data set um, to, uh, so that we can have an equal number in the, when we train um, and fit our, fit our 
model. So what this does is it ends up having a model for us that is better calibrated and more able to recognize what's the positive class and the negative class. If we train a model of the model when it has so many movies and not so many TV shows, it's going to get really good at recognizing the movies and not so good at recognizing the TV shows. So when we're able to use this kind of upsampling account for class imbalance, it'll be able to do a better job at both, have a better calibrated model. Um, okay, so that's our feature engineering. The next thing we need is our um, model that we're going to use to um, to do the fitting, to do the training. So I'm going to use the same model that I used in the last um, screencast that I did, um, a linear a support vector machine. Um, these are so nice for text problems. They work really well in a lot of cases. So this is currently in the um, development version of Parsnip. So you will need to get this, as of the day I'm recording this video, you will need to get this from um, GitHub, not from CRAN, but it will go to CRAN soon. Um, but it has really some really nice characteristics for dealing with text and often works very well with text. And... Um, we can put it together with the feature engineering. It also, it doesn't really have any important tuning parameters. Um, so it just kind of works as is typically. And we can just add it as I am showing here. And so I'm gonna put together the model and the feature engineering recipe. And we have results that look like this. So we've got our recipe with these five steps. We have our model, which is our linear support vector machine, which is uh, set up to do classification. Okay, so we have now set this up and now it's time to get ready to um, estimate how well this model does. So I'm gonna set a seed again. And I am going to use the function fit resamples, which is from Tune. I'm going to pass in my workflow. I'm going to pass in my, um, re my resamples, my folds, my cross-validation folds. And then I'm going to set a couple of options. I'm going to set the metrics because I want to, instead of the default metrics, I want to look at accuracy, um, recall, and precision. So I'm able to understand how, um, how we're going to perform in both of those, like in, in, um, for the positive and the negative cases. And then I want to save the predictions here, save pred equals true so that I can make a, com um, a confusion matrix. So let's call that SVM um, RS for results. So what is happening here? Um, for every fold, which remember we had 10 folds, 10 cross validation folds. Now this, um, this, uh, feature engineering recipe and this model are being, f um, you know, estimated and or fit on the analysis section of the, um, of each fold and then being evaluated on the assessment part of that fold. Um, if we think about so how, some of the stuff that's going on, especially in this feature engineering Res, um, you know, recipe, things like the TF-IDF, things like even, you know, this has a mean and a standard deviation. These things are all learned from the training set, the analysis set, and then applied to the assessment set. <clears throat> you know, let's even think about this last um, step smoat, right? Um, only the, only the, um, Training the analysis set is upsampled. When you evaluate, we evaluate on the data as we would find it, quote, in the wild, in its original um, proportion. Okay, so that's done. And we can um, uh, do collect metrics on the results here to see how it did. Okay, so, you know, 
this isn't the world's most fantastic model, as you know we probably expected. But notice that it's pretty balanced between you know that's not so bad, right? Between in balance between precision and recall, and that's probably because we um, we did do the upsampling um, there. So uh, let's look at let's use this function um, SVM. Uh, result and let's say let's use this function confusion matrix resampled so remember that our this this object has in it 10 sets of predictions um, and so if we say oh I want to make a confusion matrix it's it's a little unclear what we mean by that like you know what do we mean do we mean for all of them and so what this function does is it uh, makes a resampled set um, it makes a confusion matrix for uh, for when we have resamples, like in this situation. So if you do it with n right now, if you do it with no arguments, um, it makes it in a tidy um, in a in a tibble. It's in a tidy format. Or we can, if we want to say tidy equals false here. Um, we can get it in a way you might be more familiar with, and you can see that. Um, uh, you know, we've got these pretty, you know, we're doing, we're doing medium okay here. And we can do, let's say, let's say a auto plot and see how this is. Okay, so here we see the class imbalance again, right? And so this is the truth on the x-axis. And so of all the movies, you know, this, this big block here, this biggest block shows the movies that are being predicted as movies. And then over here on the TV shows, we can see that more than half of the TV shows are being predicted as TV shows, but you know, it's a little tough. It's tougher to do the TV shows than the movies. Um, I get maybe just because of the class imbalance and whatnot. But anyway, so, you know, the, we do this, this, we get this kind of result with just like a very first um, simple, straightforward kind of model that isn't, um, doesn't involve anything too difficult or fancy to do. So let's, um, let's talk about if this was the model you decided you wanted to work with and move forward with, what would you do? So you would then go to this function last fit and you take your um, workflow here, the workflow that we have, we f do last fit with back with the split function, the split object. So the split object, remember, has testing and training in it. So we have not used the testing data at all so far. And so um, this is the first time we're going to use it. So let's use the same set of um, metrics, like so. And let's call this final fitted. So we will, um, and we can do the same, we can uh, do collect metrics on it again, and we will expect to get, you know, the same kind of metrics that we got before. So remember that this is, um, this is, this is now what we're doing here is we're fitting on the training set and now we're evaluating on the testing set. So before we were using those resam those simulated little data sets, the resampled ones, and here we're now fitting to the entire training set one time and evaluating on the testing set. So when we say collect metrics here, we get out these, these metrics are on the testing set now, which is this is the first time we have done that. Um, so we can also collect the predictions out like we could have on the um, the other object as well. And that will give us predictions on the testing set again. If you notice how many rows are in this um, in this object that got you know spat out here, this is the testing set predictions not the training set and we can do we can do a um, confusion matrix here as well so we'll say the column that has the true values is it a movie or a tv show and then the predicted class there um, and we get about the same kind of proportions that we had before you know we could auto plot that as well if we wanted to see 
the same kind of visualization. And it looks, you know, about the same. So we're having about consistent results, um, which is... Good, of course, good. We're happy to see. That means we're not, you know, we're, we're not having data leakage. We're not having, um, we're not overfitting to our training data and so forth. All right, so let's say you, now you're like, okay, great. I evaluated, what do I actually do? Um, what, what, um, where is the fit that I actually want, could use moving forward. So we take that final fitted object. I don't know that I ever showed you what it looked like. So it's a tibble and it's got, it's got metrics and predictions and these things in it. One of the things it has in it is a workflow. So if we take that workflow, uh, I think we have to do that, unfortunately. So this is a fitted workflow now here and this workflow is something that you can save you can serialize and you can put into production like you can you know serve it via an api you can put it in a docker container um this is the th this workflow is the thing that you can um use um to save you know you can you could you could uh, you know read our save um what is it RDS, write RDS, you know, you could do something like this to it. So um, that's the thing you would use um, moving forward. Um, I, what I'm going to show you how to do here next is how to do a bit of, um, of variable importance, how to understand what is contributing to your predictions moving one way or the other. So I'm going to take that fitted workflow and then I'm going to pull out the parsnip fit out of it. So you think about a workflow as having two things in it, um, the feature engineering and the model algorithm. So I, what I did right now here was I pulled out the fit, the, the model fit. If you wanted, you could also pull out the um, recipe if you wanted. Um, I don't, there's no reason to do that here though. So now we have the, the parsnip fit and we can tidy that fit. And so this gives us, remember we were training a linear SVM. So that means we just get linear features out of it. Um, and <clears throat> here they are. So these, so what we have here, let's look at this. So this is the T, the TFIDF of the words from the description field. And then we have things here. And at the top, it's in alphabetical order, right? So 1970s, 1980s, about accidentally. So let's arrange this and let's see what, let's do it like this. Okay, so these are the words that contribute the most in the model in driving a prediction towards TV show. So series, docu-series, adventures, group, world, and so so I didn't take out soft words and it one of these soft words did end up being um, important here. Okay, crime, school, and crimes. So crime is more on TV shows than in movies which is kind of funny. Okay, let's look at the other direction. So, um, documentary, biopic, performance, um, how, which is another stop word, but like a stop word that apparently is used more in movies than in TV shows. Um, stand, comic, so these I bet, this is like stand-up comic, I bet. Um, film, <laughs> so people are using the word film to describe movies, but not TV shows. Anyway, okay, so we've got all this. And let's, as our last thing to wrap up here, let us um, uh, let's take this tidying. Let's tidy. And then let's build a visualization where we can just like look at the most, those most important things there. So we, so first let's take out this bias here. That is, means the same as um, um, intercept. So we don't need the intercept on our plot. And let's group by um, the sign of the estimate. And let's take the, um, by the absolute value of the estimate, let's take the top, oh, 15 words. And so what this gives us is the top 15 words in either 
um, side. Let's let's actually while we're at it, let's call that something. There we go. And um, let us um, string remove from term. Let's remove these all this business right here. We do not need that. There we go. So now we have the words. And then um, let's see. Uh, oh, that sign, that sign value there. Let us, so si let's change that. So when sign is, let's use if else. So if sign is um, true, Let's say more from TV shows. And if it's false, let's say more from movies. Like that. And now let's plop, pipe that straight into ggplot. So we're going to put the absolute value of the estimate on the x-axis, the term on the y-axis. Let's do fill equal sign. Let's put the... Let's give myself some space. Okay, let's say um, make a geome call. Uh, do we do not need the legend? And let's do a facet wrap by sign. Okay, so let's see how that works. Whoa, something didn't, oh gosh, ha ha ha. Okay. Um, let, there we go. Silly me. Silly me. Okay. So we need to say um, scales equals free. Like that. And we need to reorder this by, again, the absolute value of estimate. Which maybe I should make that a column. There we go. And now let's just um, change the labels. So what's on that x-axis? What is that? That is the coefficient from the linear SVM model. And y, I'm just going to call that null, like this. OK, so the so this, this model, I'm sorry, this this visualization answers the question, which description words are most predictive of um, a title being a movie versus a TV show. So, so yeah, we've got, we've got, um, oh, this, this is pretty interesting, actually. Um, adventures, crime, crimes, fight, personal, chance. These are things that are from TV shows, whereas um, summer, um, biopic, and violent, like those are more from movies. So, um, so this is the kind of information that we can get out from even just this pretty straightforward um, model. The, this this particular data set might be a good fit for trying uh, more um, sophisticated models, like maybe ones that take into account um, uh, word position, um, like a deep learning model. All right, so we created features for machine learning from the text data that we had in the description fields for these Netflix um, TV shows and movies. And then we use those features in a linear support vector machine. This is often a great um, basic um, uh, option for um, modeling with text. And the results we got, you know, were like, like pretty decent in, in my opinion, especially as a baseline um, to start with or um, maybe to compare to. Um, notably, especially we got a pretty good, um, uh, like a precision and recall were, were fairly balanced. And that's because of how we um, how handled the, um, uh, the class imbalance. We were able to uh, deal with that with some upsampling in this case. So um, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.